Hello, my name is Ruth Grigg from Private Tuition and Dyslexia Services. Today we're going to be looking at punctuation and we're going to be looking at commas in particular. So, when do we use a comma? Okay, this is what we're going to discover today. So, we use a comma to separate two parts of a sentence or separate parts of a sentence. Let's look at some examples here. The doorbell rang, comma, startling Mr. Johnson. So that's a phrase, the doorbell rang, so you need a comma there to separate it. Okay, look at the next one down. Jake, comma, realising he was late, comma, started running to school. Now, often when we have a name at the beginning of a sentence, we have a comma just behind it. So, whatever the name is, put a comma there. Then we have a phrase, realising he was late, comma, started running to school. Let's go up. All of a sudden, comma, the cat jumped through the cat flap. So here's the comma, because there's a little phrase there. All of a sudden, the cat jumped through the cat flap. Okay, and then here. Yes, that's right, or that is right. So we have yes, comma, that is right. So whenever we have the word yes or no, at the beginning of a sentence, always put that little comma there because there's always a little bit of a pause. Yes, comma, that is right. And the most common way that we use commas is to separate sentences, um, sorry, to separate items in a list in sentences. So let's look at one here. So we've got a sentence here and we've got a list of Julie's shopping. So let's put the commas in, shall we? Julie went shopping and bought some carrots, comma, cauliflower, comma, tomatoes, comma, onions and other food for her family. Now we don't need one there after onions because we've got the word and. Okay, let's see if we can do a little practice. Perhaps you could get a pen and paper and you could practice. You can always pause the video. Why don't we try it? So I've got here. Okay, while humming to herself. So what could they be doing? They could be ironing, washing up, putting the makeup on, listening to the radio, anything at all. You make up your own sentence and see what you can come up with. But you need a comma there while humming to herself because that's a phrase. So I'm going to put, Mary did the iron. Okay. And I'm going to just bring that down a bit so that the comma is sort of on the line, the words are on the line. There you go. Okay, looking through the telescope. So when we're looking through a telescope, we want to see things at a great distance. What kind of things would you be looking at? What kind of sentence do you think you could come up with? Let's have a think. Do you want to stop, pause, have a think and write it down? A good idea. I'm going to come up with a sentence now. Looking through the poster, Sam saw the planet. Oops, Jupiter. Bring that down so that the comma was there. There we go. The bell chimed. Let's put a comma there. Now bells can chime for lots of different reasons. Could be a wedding, could be a funeral, could be a celebration. It could be um, telling you it's dinner time. So why don't you have a little think? Jot down a little sentence about when the bell could chime. Make sure you put a comma there. 
bell chimed. We all jumped up to go to go to dinner. There we go. Put that on the line. What did you come up with? Let's think of the next one. Everyone said yes. So what do you think everyone would say yes to? Hmm. Can you think of a sentence and write it down? Pause the video, write it down. Okay, when you finish, come back and um, have a look at what I'm going to write. Well, here goes. Everyone said yes. They are coming to the party. Whoa. Oops, that one needs to come down. Okay. A car raced down the road, comma. Please think of something, write it down, and come back. A car raced down the road. Suddenly putting on the brakes as, as it speeded on the ice. Here we go. The car raced down the road, comma, suddenly putting on the brakes as it skidded on the ice. Ooh, yeah. Okay, the balloon floated high into the sky. So, can you pause the video and think of something? Think of a sentence that you could put there and jot it down. Don't forget to put your comma in. The balloon floated high into the sky. Yes. Oops, it's taking time now. You said, Goodbye to our books. You could put anything there. You could be in one of those big balloons. Mm, exciting. Okay. Now this time we're going to use a comma to separate items in the list. So David's favourite colours are, now here is the red, here's the list, look, red, green, blue and purple. So where would you put it? This is where the list begins, red. Can you let me do it? No. Okay, I'm just going to try something else. I'll try the pen now. Red, comma, green, comma, blue. Now, because I've got and, I don't need one more. Red, green, blue, and purple. Okay, let's look at the next list. Emily asked her mum if she could go to the park with Jenny, Amy, and Martha. So here's the list. It's a list of people's names. Where would you put those commas? Have a little think. Shall I try? Jenny. Amy, now we've got the word and, so we don't need one here. Martha, so just need one there. Look. Number three. The couple wanted to travel to Paris, Barcelona, Berlin, Rome, and London. So we have a list here of different cities. So let's put the, the commas in. Where would you put them? Have a little think. Do we even have a little think? Where would you put them? Okay, we put one here. One here, after Barcelona, one after Berlin, 
Rome and London. And on the last one, number four, we've got daffodils, roses, lilacs and daisies are my favourite flowers. Now this time the list is at the beginning of the sentence. Here. So let's put in our commas. Why don't you have a think first about where they should go and then I'll pop them in. You ready? Daffodils, comma, roses, comma, lilacs, now I've got the word and, so I don't need it there. Daisies are my favourite flowers. How did you get on with that? I hope you did okay. Right. Okay, so we're going to look at a few more examples. So on number three here, it says, when you list several things in a sentence, you must divide them with commas, which is what we've just been doing, haven't we? I put on my hat, comma, my gloves, comma, and my scarf. You don't always need that there. Now it's asking you to write a sentence listing at least three things that you're good at. And then you write another sentence listing three things that are challenging for you. Ooh. So I might just do this one for you. I'll, I'll try and um, yeah, see what I can do. So you might need to pause the video yourself and have a little go at this. Three things I am good at. I am good at singing. Um, Typing, <laughs> comma, and what else am I good at? The one that is so teaching. Oh, I've forgotten to say and, so I'll go back there. And teaching. Okay, now I'm going to take that off because I've not got room. I'm going to make a new sentence. Things I find challenging, I am not so good at. I am not good at um, driving a bike, baking cakes, I'm not good at that, I really am not, and I'm going to put and being patient, there you go, notice why I put the commas, I'm not good at riding a bike, comma, baking cakes, I don't need one there, do I? Because I've got and being patient. There you go. Write a sentence listing the people in your family. Be sure to use commas. Okay, so in my family is my husband Paul, my sons. AJ, I'll call him for short, and JJ for short, I won't, I won't give you their names. So I've got Paul, comma, my sons, comma, AJ, I don't need a full stop there. So I'd put, you put the full name in there, and JJ, so you put that person's full name in there. Paul, I'm going to go back, AJ. JJ, so you put in the full names, and then I put in and nice. You might not need that comma there. So how many commas have I got? In my family is my husband Paul, comma, my sons, comma, AJ, comma, JJ, and myself. There you go. Can you write your own? I'm sure you can. Okay, let's see what I can do with this. Oh, I need to, I need to um, clear the screen. There we go. Let's look at this example here. Write a sentence that describes your hair. Be sure to include at least two consecutive adjectives. That means they describe them, they're describing words. And to divide them with a comma. Ooh. Let me give you an example. 
say my hat is brown, thick, so I've got very thick curls on it, and curly. And I need a moment. No. I've made a bit of a list, haven't I? My hair is brown, so I've described it. Thick. It's a description and curly. And I've put bombers there. Next one. It says right. Three sentences about three different animals. I'm going to leave you to do that one on your own. Use at least two adjectives, that means words that describe them, in each sentence to describe the animal. Be sure to divide them with a command. So I'll give you one example, one or two. My cat is my is black and white. Fat, comma, he is fat as well. And very hungry all the time. There we go. So I've got lots of commas here, at least two adjectives. Black is an adjective which describes in colour, and white is an adjective. Fat. That's an adjective, it's describing him. I'm very hungry, that's also an adjective. I've got at least four in there, haven't I? All the time. But look, I've got my commas. Black and white, comma. Fat, comma. I'm very hungry all the time. There you go. Can you think of some sentences? I'm sure you can. Okay, so that is the end of the lesson. I will try to send you over some PDFs so that you can practice as well and see how good you can get at doing commas or putting them, shall we say, in the right place. So I'm going to say goodbye for now. Yes, goodbye for now. I hope you enjoy practicing. And I will see you all again soon. Bye.